Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and today we are going to take a look at the latest news from DCS World. The Mosquito Mach 6 has landed, nicknamed the Mosey or the Wooden Wonder thanks to its frame being constructed mostly of wood. This multi-crew compatible module finally got released in DCS World, bringing more diversity in our World War II scenarios. When asked about what would most users do when they finally get the Mosquito in DCS, well, these are just a few answers that we got. Raid bombing, of course. Night bomber intercept in the clouds. Another user said that he will be flying around the AO doing formations with random users. Not bad. Then we got to see a trend. Night bombing, night bombing again, night bombing escorts and occasionally returning from night bombing. And the last one and one of my favorites, nipping over France, prowling the skies looking for unsuspecting German units and smashing up everyone unfortunate to be spotted outside of the cover of the Bocage. Nice. Now stay tuned as we are going to include the Mosquito in our startup tutorial series and of course we will be on the spot with it in future videos. Now together with the Mosey, the channel map reached its final release point. Together with a list of new unique assets that are included in the map, we got some adjustments to the minimum and maximum temperatures values for all seasons. Many improvements have also been made to trees, settlements, roads, bridge LODs models and airfields. Destruction models have also been added. A number of significant fixes have also been made and bugs along construction and building routes as well as unnatural ground forms along river embankments have also been fixed. It's a joy to fly the channel now that is complete with its scheduled features. And of course keep in mind that this doesn't mean that ED will now stop to improve and provide fixes to the map. That will continue as time goes by and with almost every patch things will only get better. Moving on, with news from the upcoming Apache Longbow, ED provided a sneak peek with an integrated helmet and display sight system better known as iHats. This system includes a monocle that provides imagery to the right eye. Now first time I saw this, I immediately got worried on how would this translate in VR. A normal helmet mounted display that we use in other modules like the F-18 Hornet works good in VR, so we trust this one will do just fine. ED mentioned that he did some extensive research in order to closely match the ergonomics and accurately recreate this view from the pilot and co-pilot gunner positions. Now about this system, in addition to slaving the 30mm chain gun, the iHads also provides both pilots important flight navigation weapons, fire control and sensor information. Then the modernized pilot night vision system or the MPNVS is an infrared camera on the front of the aircraft that is also slave to the helmet's line of sight. This allows the pilot to see in the dark within the confines of the iHats and gimbal limits of the MPNVS. The video was short, but I gotta say it's the shortest most great look that takes our breath away. Maybe that's why it's short, not to flatline the audience, Hmm, it may be. And as I stepped out of the recording studio, it just happened that we got another sneak peek for the Apache. This time a look at the Tactical Situation Display or TSD. The TSD can be displayed on either multipurpose display in the pilot or co-pilot gunner cockpits and it will be your primary source for navigation, situation awareness, storing points and more. It can be interfaced with using the fixed and variable actions buttons arrayed around the MPDS and the TSD cursor for hands-on cyclic and collective TSD control. You can select between charts, satellite and digital moving maps. Both navigation and attack phases can be selected and store points can be created and set as an acquisition source. Well, our A10C users will feel very comfortable with it. So with the Apache getting ready to be released, we will wait for the first startup procedure video with patience and excitement. So back in May, we covered on one of our previous on the spot news episodes the high digit SAM pack that adds more air defense systems, modern and historical. But last week, ED informed us that we are going to get the Soviet S 200, NATO SA 5 Gammon, more precise, the model based on the Syrian army system that uses the ST 68U search radar with maximum engagement range of 150 kilometers. Given the missile size and the distance that it can operate over, the SA-5 is the most effective in the defense role against large, less maneuverable bombers, tankers and AWACS aircraft. However, it can still present a threat to the unwary small fighter-sized targets. Looking back this month, we had a few developments. One around the 4th of September, when Hitler stated that the huge F-14 update that was slated to release on September 28 will be moved for a release on the 14th of October. 
This is the update that we were talking so many times here on the channel. The mighty USS Forrestal class carrier, remember? And not only that, but also the Jester Lantern and other major features for both the Tomcat and the Vigan. Looking forward for a more detailed look the next few weeks and we are close for another Hitler roadmap roundup. I know you liked the last one. And to bring another carrier in the show, well Leatherneck Simulations posted this picture representing the hangar bay for the SX class carrier that is still in development. And to respond to them, yes guys, it looks pretty cozy in there. Keep up the good work. On the 9th of September we got some news from Eagle Dynamics about the harm situation with the Viper. All in all, we are getting the payloads restriction options in a mission editor, allowing mission designers to restrict weapons to specific stations for both single player and multiplayer missions. So from now on, we choose which Viper units have their harm shotters wired for the station 4 and 6 and which one don't have this option. No more confusion and no more trouble. And that's it, thank you all for watching, keep a lookout for the startup procedure for the Mozi that will feature very soon on the channel. For those of you who missed it, we got a new series called the Add-on Spotlight here at How I Play, hope you guys like it. If you want to support the channel, there are a few ways linked in the video description, but the simplest one is to remember to give us a like if you find our video informative. And of course, subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.